Hi, hey. you're about to watch a date the Hallmark episode. Mm -hmm. Thanks for doing that. We want to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Philo. You can get 25% off your Philo membership and watch all of the movies we're talking about by going to philo.tv slash DTH. Unlimited DVR, all your favorite channels in one place. Go to philo.tv slash DTH. Philo is for everyone. Enjoy the episode. a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Bran, and I love Hallmark Princess Christmas movies. Hey, I'm Panda. Guess what? I also love Hallmark <laughs> Christmas Princess movies. They're the best. Just calm down over there. You know, the, the belt is not on the line. Uh, I'm Dan. I despise Hallmark Christmas movies, even the princess ones. No. And this is, is the, the Deck, Deck of Hallmark, Hallmark podcast. podcast. Princess. Friday. Oh, it is if, this podcast. What if we did uh, Princess Friday? Oh my god! What was that a thing we did Sign every Friday? It's Princess Friday. Hallmark's getting in with the uh, the themes for Christmas in July, like Blake Shelton Saturday. Are they really doing a Blake Shelton Saturday? Yeah, please Playing don't all tell me they're. they're you guys not read the news no. of Hallmark? That's not news. <laughs> it's literally what we do. You read have to trades. read the news. Man, I'm good. That's why you do it. That's dude. right. You yeah, tell for, us, and then we sit yeah. there. We're like, we have oh, a Facebook okay, cool. Messenger group, and you just tap in and just go. Do you guys hear the scuttlebutt? And we're like, no. No. And you're like, here's the link, and we're like, great. Is Blake Shelton? They're doing like different theme. They're doing theme. Well, nights. he's had a you know that his movie yeah. series. Yeah, time, time for you, time, time for you for to me, time for us, all of them, y'all. So they're doing them all in a row. They're doing theme nights. They get it. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Super. Mm. I'll just flip it on over to Great American Country. That's where the, <laughs> so the real movies are. Welcome That's where to the, the real families taking right. place. Yeah. Hey, I'm Timmy Gack. I'm the host of Gack. T Timmy Gack. Timmy Gack. Okay. <laughs> Up next, we also have a Blake Shelton night. <laughs> Music videos to compete. Gack. I love Timmy Gack. Yeah. I'm in for Timmy Gack. He's the theme. Sure. He's the guy. He just, he's uh, the theme. He's the theme of the network. Do you remember uh, on Fox Family back in like 98, 99, they had something called The Basement that was some guy with spiked hair and he would introduce like Three Friends and Jerry was the name of the TV show and he'd be like, hey man, welcome to The Basement. You made all that up, right? Not a joke. Not that sounds like you made all of it up. Yeah, Look, the, can you the, Google that? Fox and Friends. It. No, not Fox, Fox and Friends. Fox and Family. Fox Family, Fox family, Fox family. which is not related to Fox and Friends or the Fox News Channel. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, in the basement. They were trying to... And then they were Jerry to and th Three Friends. What? Three Friends and Jerry was a Swedish show that they dubbed over in English, and they cut out the bad words so that you could watch it's, it. It's, it's words three, in Swedish. Three Friends and, uh, and Jerry. Three Friends and like Jerry. It just sounds like a night with Jerry Falwell. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah. It's going to be that kind of Friday, oh, huh? Oh, baby. Yeah, mm. Fox Family's The Basement. Welcome to the base. And they clearly were trying to rip off Nickelodeon. Yeah, Nickelodeon used to do stuff like that all the time. Mm. But they were trying to appeal to the kids who were just getting home from school, and so they showed their edgier stuff, dude, like three friends, and like Jerry. three friends named Jerry and Jerry and Jerry. Yeah, my bad. Okay, it, dude, it was. I dude, watched an episode friends, the other day. It was edgy. Three friends named Jerry. That was a show. Oh man, it was. It was really oh. confusing though. They were like yeah. Jerry, 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 Jerry. I got a clap, unfortunately. <laughs> Hey, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Oh, What's up? Jerry Berry, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, Jerry Carey. <laughs> hey, Jerry Mary, where you at? Oh, I'm right here. <laughs> Jerry Flary. Oh. Yeah. There's a fourth hey, Jerry. See, well, there's two Jerry Flarys. That's where it gets <laughs> off the rails. There's five Jerrys? Five Jerrys and one bucket of cream. Oh. <laughs> Good show. Wow. What were what they going to find over the... Uh, was it like ice cream? You'd have to watch the whole episode. <laughs> yeah. I got the commentary. So you, uh, what, what we were, what we were going uh, for. What we were trying to do here. The high jinx. It's called three guys three, named Jerry, but, but what if there were more? Five, and two of them had the same last and name. It was wild. Somebody and was. everything's better with cream. If cream, yeah, it was That's a bucket true. of cream. Yeah. There was, a, a, there was a, like a you, there was a literal fight over that cream, there, if you remember. Literal, literal. Yeah, where, and we not did, a fake one. We did have an argument of where we should call it a bucket or a vat. Right. I was all in on vat, and I said cream, a bucket, and yeah. we went with bucket. We went with rock paper scissors. Right. <laughs> Man, 
It's good stuff. Why they do commentary? Who is still listening? <laughs> Who is still listening to Deck the Hallmark? <laughs> like it's Friday, and we're we're four minutes into a bit called Three Friends Named Jerry. Jerry Christmas. Hey guys, Merry Christmas, Jerry. Merry Christmas, Jerry. Merry Christmas, Jerry. Hey, Merry Christmas, oh, Jerry. Merry Christmas, Jerry. Merry Christmas, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Jerry. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Jerry. Merry Christmas. Merry oh. Christmas. So that was when they did. Uh, <laughs> they said Merry Christmas eleven times because they had seen it on Reunited with yes. Christmas. This is a recent show. This show yeah. came out. Last so year. what we were going for here, we saw this Hallmark Channel movie where they ended the movie with uh, "Merry Christmas" eleven times, and we and all thought we it was thought splendid. that was yeah, art. Was that Christmas was art. art. That was good movie making. That right was there. art. Oh, mm-hmm. Gave me the vibes. <laughs> Market of cream. We're talking about. Um, a Princess for Christmas. Join Bramble Jam Plus, guys. I'm serious. Like, <laughs> you, you want more of that? Look, you you just go, you get the Facebook group, and it's, I mean, it's people that are also laughing at that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, ye, do it. It's a fun do it. time. Do it. We're talking to Princess for Christmas, which is available like on Netflix and Prime, but it did originally air on Hallmark. Hallmark. It's and a Lionsgate production. Yeah. And you can watch it on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries on July 1st as a part of Christmas in July Ooh. on Philo, July 1st mm. at 12 p.m. Um, a, a, a Princess for Christmas uh, originally aired on December 3rd, 2011, and it went a little something like this. Jules is an antique store worker in Buffalo, New York, so her life's going well. Uh, she's become the legal guardian of her niece, Maddie, her nephew, Milo. Uh, this happened after the loss of her sister and brother-in-law. Jules gets fired from her antique job in Buffalo, New York, because no one wants to buy antiques anymore that live in Buffalo, New York. And then the babysitter quits because the children are awful. We get a knock, knock, knock on the door, and it's Paisley Winterbottom. <laughs> uh, Paisley Winterbottom's a butler uh, for a grandfather, their grandfather. His name's Duke Edward. And Duke Edward um, is uh, extending an invitation to Milo and Maddie because he wants to meet his grandchildren to spend Christmas uh, with them in the country of Castleberry. Castleberry, yeah. Uh, she says no. But then she finds out the Duke is dying, and she said, maybe. They arrive at the palace, where the Duke seems to be doing just fine. Jules finds herself meeting Prince Ashton, the brother of her sister's husband, Charles. And um, boy, is he a blessing. Uh, she decides to confront the Duke about the lack of a Christmas tree. Like, are you some kind of a monster? And he says, yes, I am some kind of a monster. I hate Christmas trees. Jules isn't having it and takes Maddie out to get a Christmas tree and they decorate it. Edward finds out, becomes very upset and comes in and says, what are you doing? And Maddie, being a cute little girl, hands him an ornament and says, remember Christmas? And uh, he's filled with the Christmas spirit as he remembers what uh, this ornament that, she, that he has in his hands means to him. And he decides that he's going to bring back the Christmas Eve ball. While teaching Milo archery, Ashton talks about his brother and uh, how much he mattered and how the Duke uh, disowned him after marrying Jules' sister, which led to Jules' resentment towards the Duke. And uh, everyone is really starting to get along and show that uh, we know that they're getting along because we get this very, 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 very long dance scene where everyone dances. What are you watching? Like, uh, why is this happening? What are you watching? I don't understand. Like, you've been locked in... <laughs> To bread hot dog, bread hot dog, for way too long. No, I don't think so. It's just a corn hacks. dog. No, yeah, but those are hacks. It's and not, not a really hacks. I don't want. They're not helpful. I don't want that's king what's bizarre thin bread. About it. But that's in between hot dogs. But I don't, if you were gonna do that, no, it's look a, at that. you are messing. You've been on this for two and a half minutes. Yeah, He's reading the synopsis. It's just wild. It's crazy. These are nuts. Jules is walking and fixing clocks when she overhears um, you Edward. You slice a grapefruit that way. That's not a grapefruit, bro. That's a melon. It's green. 
It's not a grapefruit. Yeah, I think you're right. You do slice it that way. That's exactly how you Yeah, but that. What, what are they, they making? Doing? Are they making a that's bow? Not, that's not even helpful. Why are you watching this? Why? Because why would you call when it? When do you need to decorate fruit? Tricks? When do you need to decorate fruit? Well, I don't, but it says useful kitchen tricks to save your time. It doesn't save anybody's time. What that's they, my uh, point. Why what do they say do about the cream? <laughs> when, where's the cream come in, boys? Hey, it's me, Jerry. I'm one of the three Jerry's. God bless. Uh, Jules is going around fixing clocks, and she overhears Ash and Edwards talking about someone who is uh, untitled, crass, and doesn't belong at the ball. But they invited her anyways. Jules uh, thinks that that's about her. Bunny McCracken. Yeah, yeah, it is. Not just anybody. It's Bunny Bunny McCracken. McCracken. It's Bunny McCracken. Uh, the staff accidentally uh, ruins Jules' dress, and by ruins, I mean apparently burns it. Um, and she takes it as an excuse, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. They don't want me to go. I'm not going to go. Um, she decides that she's going to go back to America early, tells the kids to go to the party still, and we'll meet back up, I guess, at some point. Uh, despite their efforts to make her stay, she leaves. The housekeeper finds that Jules missing, and... Um, she uh, and some of the other the crew uh, go to find her, and they bring this really nice dress that they bought from Vienna. And she says, you got that dress for me? I guess I'll come back. The ball's happening. Ashton verifies what we all assumed about his girlfriend, Lady Arabella. Uh, that Lady Arabella only wants him for his title. Mm, mean, mean old, mean old lady. Uh, Jules arrives at the ball. When Ashton finds her, she says uh, she's not trying to be an embarrassment. I don't want to, you know. I know I'm, you know, not. I'm untitled and whatnot. And uh, you got it. <laughs> Stay with. Me. He's like, "What are you talking about?" And then he, she, you know, she's kind of uses some more words. And Ashton's like. You're talking about Bunny McCracken. You're, <laughs> Listen, this is no. you, this misunderstanding. This is a, she's the worst. Um, and she's like, oh, well, that clears it all up. They dance some more. Um, and uh, Arabella and her parents uh, try to turn Edward and Ashton against Jules. That doesn't work out well. Uh, and she leaves. Ashton asks Jewel to extend their stay, and she agrees. The family then goes and catches Santa, putting gifts under a Christmas tree. And then at the very end, the two of those crazy kids get married, and they ride off together, and we say, yippee! Yippee! yippee. Was Bunny invited? And that, my friends, was a princess, princess for, for Christmas! Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So... You were just watching some kitchen hacks. But they were hacks to make things that no one needs to make. You know what? I'm sharing this to our, our Facebook Please group. Please do. And so that we could, we could see what people think about this. Is that nifty? Is that tasty? What, what page are you watching that on? I just feel I, like, I, like meet, meet, meet Dan DIYs. I, I worry that Panda just gets ripped off by everything. <laughs> like it's hard for me to sleep sometimes because I just feel like he gets pulled in and then gets ripped off. And like I worry. I worry about him. I, don't you worry about me, Dan. Okay. I, uh, I, I'm having the time. Of my I'm watching life. you try to share a link, and it's, that's <laughs> yeah. also fun. Uh, we'll so. be right back here on Dirty Homer. So, Panda, for the last time, <laughs> stop watching Philo on, from the convenience of your cell phone. I can't help it, Dan. It's so convenient. I know. You're always watching the Philo. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> You can take Philo with you? Wherever you go? So I can watch all the reality that I could ever want. It's not like you have the DVR on your phone, do you? Uh, I do. You do? Yes. Is it is it limited to a certain number? No, of... no, no. It's unlimited, Dan. Do you want to know watching? what I do you want to know what I also just found out today? What? That Philo's unlimited DVR isn't just unlimited in uh in the amount, but it's also gonna last for a full year. What? what? I know. I just found that out too. And I was like, that would have been good to know. So the movie that I record for Christmas in July that's new will last all, all the way year. Show it again next July? That's exactly right. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. How are they, and are they, <laughs> no, are they charging like $80 a month now? No. Still 25 bones? 25 bones. And here's the thing. They're going to give you 25% off those 25 bones by going to philo.tv slash DTH. Philo.tv slash DTH. Start DVR and stuff for now and later. Candy can't land it. <laughs> hey, oh everybody. man, start DVR and stuff now and, <laughs> and, later. and, later. and for later, for later, for later, for later. <laughs> for later.
Uh, we're talking about A Princess for Christmas, which is a Christmas uh, Hallmark movie from 2011 that um, is one of the rare ones that you can find out in the wild. <laughs> and so uh, here it is. It's a Lionsgate. It's a Lionsgate. Oh, it's it's a Saw classic. in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, let's talk about it. We have four segments to do that. We're going to start with the hot take. Hot it's take. where we share exactly how I felt about this movie. And we don't hold back. And I'm going to start with my good friend, Panda. Guys, what do you want from me? I mean, it's a it's a princess movie. Checks all the boxes. Beautiful castle. Uh, love, romance, uh, lots of fun. Love and romance? Get yeah, out of here. Love and romance. Wow. Uh, Unbelievable. It has a is some grumpy workers who come around at the very end and embrace the family. Uh, it has a grumpy grandpa uh, played by... Roger Moore. Roger Sir Moore. Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Uh, there's heart in this movie. Gosh, it's it's uh, my I, favorite. Can I, I ask you this? This is a great princess. It's movie. your favorite princess movie. I pulled back on that because I said it's my favorite, and then I pulled back and I said it's a. It's What's a great your favorite one? Still, I don't know. I've got to ponder. This one might be it. Okay. This one might be it. Wow, uh, it's beautiful. Wow, they, they take you to the village. There's Christmas everywhere. Let me ask you this. Can I ask you a question? Because yeah, yeah, I knew that yeah. this was going to be your hot take. From the time that they arrive in Castleberry, mm -hmm. Snowfall and Castle, the yeah. big, big ordeal. Is there anything they could have done to lose you? <laughs> <laughs> or was it a done deal 15 minutes in? Once they showed me the castle, yeah. it was going to... In, they, in they, fact, they, I would hey, be willing to say... They must have burned the castle down. At, at, that, at that point, I would be willing to say that it was on track to be your favorite ever. Yes, it was. So yeah. we could actually say from that point forward, a little bit of a disappointment. Hey, what's the prince's <laughs> name? What's the prince's name? Uh, well, okay, hold on. <laughs> yeah, what's the prince's name? You don't know. Uh, Ash Fresh Prince. <laughs> yeah, look at you. Jules, name of the girl. The kids? Uh, B Bobby and Briny. <laughs> Bo Dang Bobby it. and Briny. Dude, Bro I, don't, I don't know. Maddie and Lil T. Now, Lil, Lil T's is, uh, his real name. Uh, he's yeah, a, a rapper also now. is big. He is, he is 25, 25 years old, old in That's this right. movie. That's right. Uh, he, he is a 5'1 adult male playing a teenager. It is unsettling it's, watching it is, him It's act. wild. It is enough to not give this movie a pass. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, I, I will say that that maybe is part of the reason <laughs> I pulled back. I sat there and then Favorite I just- Favorite big T. Oh, the big actor of just, the little, is, little T is uh, uh, an, an interesting part of this movie. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. It is like when they like uh, CGI'd like young Leia in like Rogue One. It's weird, man. And <laughs> <laughs> except, he's, except he's not CGI at all. He's just there like, hey, it's me, guys. When he's just like hitting on one of the maids like it's just knowing that he's 24 at the it's time weird like, it's just it is unsettling yeah. but he's 12 in the move he's 12 it's a 24 12 sitch oh how many 24 year olds do you know that are going to play a 12 year old not many not many so kudos to him kudos he to was also in the real life version of fairly odd parents which i know people were flocking to yeah for to sure see. yeah wait uh, there was a real life version yeah. of that Live action, guys. Live action. The other one happened in real life as well. Like, it was a show that uh, aired no, in real no, life. No, it didn't. You're nuts, dude. Dude. <sighs> Crazy. Boy. I don't know how you... Uh, <laughs> so live. you're telling me the live action one happened in reality? It happened in real life. You could touch it. You could touch it. If you were there, Dan, you could have touched it. Yeah. You could have touched, on a movie you could have touched Lil T. Live action. You could have touched Lil T. That sounds worse than it actually is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good good luck good luck good luck touching Timmy Turner in the animated version. You couldn't do it. Your you hand would hit it. the screen. It would hit the screen. You go boink. It would hit the screen. That's why it's live action. Live action. No, not that's real why it's life. real life. It's not real life. <laughs> and even you know it's wrong. What do you mean point? it's not real life? Could it's I fake. touch it's Lil fake. T? <laughs> Could I touch Lil T? Could I touch him? What's the what's his name in Fairly Odd Parents? Uh, I think he plays Timmy Turner. Could you touch Timmy Turner? No, you could not. Then of it's course, not in real life. Then it's not in real life. That's right. It's live action, not real I think life. The point he's making is yeah. He you helped me. You literally no, flip no, sides no, of no, that. I, I know meant, it. What I meant to say was <laughs> it, it. No, no. I said because you said it's not in I real life. I said it's live action, not real life. Real life would be Timmy Turner actually exists. We, he did in that moment. No, he's he's playing. Little T is playing. He is Timmy in real Turner. life. No. Okay, it happened in real life. Yeah. But then that also didn't happen. It's in real fun. Life. It's fun for you two to be wrong. <laughs> and you want to know what? I want to say one more important thing, and I think this is just as okay. important as anything else we've said. God's not dead. 
he's, he's surely alive. So help me, God. <laughs> um, <laughs> is it my turn? Yeah, it's your yeah, turn. Uh, yeah, this was fine. This was fine. It was fine. There was a, there's a lot of highs in this movie. There's a lot of lows in this movie. And what we get is ends up being fine. Uh, Crown, I think Crown for Christmas is still my preferred uh, mm. royal ding, movie. Ding, 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 ding. And I think that's... It, yeah. I don't know if it's because it was my first... Or this is because it's, it's my so. only. It's hard to say, um, but either way, I think that one's still my favorite. But this one's good. It's 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 better than other royal ones, um, but it's not the best. It's not the royal for me. Yeah, I like Sir Roger Moore in this movie means we have to at least say it's not a dumpster fire just based upon his performance and him 84 year old sir roger moore being there delivering lines with gravitas that really works for me everything else in this movie doesn't work for me in fact when they try to land some of the normal princess stuff it doesn't work very well i think a crown for christmas is the gold standard by which these movies are made the first Christmas Prince movie on Netflix is very similar to Crown for Christmas, but people that like these royal movies are looking like it's like a Hallmark movie niche within Hallmark movies. They're looking for the beats to be hit a very specific way. Yeah. Crown for Christmas to me does that the best of all. Um, this movie does have, once again, a 24-year-old man playing a 12-year-old boy. That's very, very weird. I... The Castleberry was probably the least convincing country of any of the countries we've had so far. The castle was cool. The snow looked good. Sir Roger Moore was great. So, you know, it's a it's a hit or miss for me. Would you say more hit or more miss? More miss for me. Uh, hate to see that. Like I, at that moment, he was he's method. He was Timmy Turner. <laughs> There's one thing I know about so Lil T. Lil T's a method actor. Yes. Yeah, so that's why he was real, Timmy Turner. That's why every and that's why anyone's real. Okay, so the only reason we're real is because we are method we, at playing ourselves. We are who we thought we were, and we let ourselves well, off the hook. hook for sure. It's time for all the feels part of the show. We talk about one of this movie goes so feels pain. How about the ornament scene with Roger Moore? I mean, oh, that's boy. just I mean, amazing. come on, come uh, on. What yeah. more do you want in a movie? It's the moment he turns and, and starts loving the family. It's just, it's great. The kid who, he doesn't even, I don't, has he even met his grandkids before? Yeah, he's it? met his grandkids and they. But uh, this is a big thing. He wants to see his grandkids before, he, like he's getting old, he's about to yeah. die. And so little girl comes over with the ornament and tells the story. And he gets to tell the story of, of you know, that ornament and his brother had one. He broke his, his brother gave. Like, it's great. It's everything you want a Christmas movie in one scene. Yep. It's one of my favorite, favorite scenes. I, I got, I've got no issue with the scene. It's wonderful. I had the feels. I had the same, yep. same one. Yeah, obviously, sure. that's the yeah. feels. And also, the castle was great. And oh, yeah, like field. they did a really good job with the snow falling on the outside. Snow like, looked great. All the time. It was great. Yeah. Big fun there. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to get into the wait, what, and the what, the hallmark here on Deck the Hallmark. He's as real as anybody else is. <laughs> live action is all you have to real say. Real life. No, real life. Okay. I think we all know that. Yeah. I mean, we, we, I can keep talking. Maybe Panda will prove my point again. Okay. I, I didn't this. prove it the first time. Yeah, you did. You keep and changing you know the like, goal. You know Panda. Hey, Panda. I Looney keep... Tunes. Uh, uh, real life. <laughs> <laughs> Took less time than I thought. What do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the answer first, and I'll get it right. You want me to say like fake? You say animated. animated. It's animated. <laughs> Space Jam. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You're not going to trick me up on no, that. No, fool me once. <laughs> you you can't, can't shoot the shooter. It's <laughs> can't 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 snow. Uh, can't snow. It's, I'm a snowman. snowman. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the way what is part of the show where we talk about what is movie. Let's go way what, and I'll start with you, Panda. Um, listen, we gotta talk about her accent real quick. Um, oh, could we? Uh, could we please? Mick McBride, McKnight. What was her name? Rachel McKnight. Is yeah, that it? you know, it's, it's all over the place. Like, is, by, by, is that Rachel McKnight? That's no. Rachel Platten. Dang is that it. Rachel Platten. Yeah. <laughs> You got any, the Rachel, right? any excuse to sing that song, though, oh, right, yeah. boys? You're right, buddy. <laughs> so Rachel song. McKnight, not even in the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> Katie McGrath is what we're looking for. We do have a clip of Rachel McKnight. It could trace Quinn. Cue that clip. Lil T playing Timmy Turner is real life. 
I like it. Man, it's to the point where that stuff, I don't know if it lands with listeners, but I love it. <laughs> that is deep inside a bit inside. It. That's a legit Russian nesting doll yep. bit right there. And I love it, Brand. That's as good as you got right there. Thanks, that's Thanks. that's gold. Yeah, I'll yeah. sleep good tonight. Yeah, that's right. Katie My McGra- back is hurting, though, so I don't I know say if I it was? will. <laughs> Katie M- M- McGrath? Yeah, Katie yeah. McGrath. Katie McGrath. Her, her accent all over the place. It really she, is. Um, She'll burst out. At she's hot. Talking. She's Irish. She's Irish. She's Irish. In she's, real life, she's she'll playing just, someone from Buffalo. Buffalo, yeah. And it just—I mean, there are times she'll start talking to a kid, and it's just full <laughs> Irish accent. Like, it is just, just drifting in and out. And at first, we thought, okay, she's she's, she's trying to play like she's royal. She's royal, and then, but then we realized, no, no, it just no. she's just like a metronome, just somewhere in between these two is where she should be, and she just keeps going back and forth. And here's the thing: she's a big time deal now. She's in Jurassic World. She was, I think, she was the lead actress in King Arthur. Yes, um, Merlin, she, it, Merlin, and Merlin too. I think she's both. It was both was the really? Charlie okay. Hunman, Guy Ritchie, King oh, Arthur. Wow, okay. she's in that too. She's a big deal, and I she's gotten better. But in this movie, I, there's not a, been an editing there's thing. not a buffalo accent to be found mm-hmm. in this movie mm-hmm. and it is it's a strain it's a struggle for it, sure. it was definitely tough the good news is is that in castleberry the accents are all over the map and everyone so has a different accent. as soon as she gets there she fits in a little bit better <laughs> than when she's back in in buffalo canada like she she doesn't do as well there as she does in castle it, it's a mess man yeah. but it was it, it's still you know i'll give that a pass <laughs> Because the movie's awesome. I mean, it was bad, but it's well. I mean, we'll give her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what well, you want me to say? Yeah. I love castle movies, uh, th- which leads me to the. the I blame one Rachel scene McKnight for this. That no, lasted don't forever. You dare. <laughs> What Rachel McKnight? Yeah. She's she's a gem. She's the patron patron. She's the patron saint. She's patron saint. She's the patron it's saint. Not patron. <laughs> she's the patron saint of this world. <laughs> of this whole world. Yeah. <laughs> she is. It's true. I am. <laughs> Tell me about Rachel McKnight's on the line. <laughs> yes. Right. It is as true as anything. Rachel, where are you calling in from? Let's let's see Anna. Let's see Anna. Let's see Anna. Let's see Anna. Okay. Is that Louisiana? <laughs> no, it's my friend, Lizzie Anna. <laughs> You're calling from Lizzie Anna's house? Yes. Okay. You know her? I do not. She's the patron saint of this world. Wait, I thought you were. We tag team. I get East Coast, she gets West Coast. Did you say I get <laughs> oh, her? Wait a minute. Of the world, but it's only East Coast, West Coast? USA over everything, baby. <laughs> She's a national. I'm starting to doubt that she is uh, the patron saint of this world. And I thought she said something about scones. <laughs> I didn't think she said coast. Well, mm. boy, I cut her off, boys. Don't worry, she won't be back here. Mark my work. Trace, you sound a lot like Rachel McAdams. Just saying, <laughs> the patron saint of this world. Thank you, <laughs> Panda. There's other ones there. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, Blair. they have. Uh, uh, in the scene that lasts way too long, they where they're all practicing rock guitar and ballet and then dancing. My thing is, you have a whole castle to practice in. Why is the guy yeah. playing rock guitar right next to the ballet and the dance? Like, you have a whole castle, guys. Like, yeah. find spread another room. You could spread out. Yeah. You could just do it. Uh, I don't. I, I raise this to you guys, and you guys didn't have a problem with it. But <laughs> the whole staff pitching in to buy the dress is just weird to me at the very end. And here's why. You work for a guy who is clearly a truckload of money. Just talk to him. He's, about- a, he's a truckload of money. He sure he has a truckload when he walks of money. around, it's like, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> what if he, listen, here's why they don't ask him is because they're terrified of him. Like his turn of wanting to do Christmas is, does not make up for the fact for the last, you know, several decades, he's just been angry at life. They don't like, like they don't ask him to do that kind of stuff that I didn't, I bought that for sure. I wish they'd have bought her a better dress. They got from Vienna, Dan. Even, well, it was from Vienna by way of like Ariel trying to make it out of the water onto land. Okay. Okay. Here we go. You that wouldn't blue know. color was more royal than anything you've ever seen. It was royal, Dan. No, it was not. You would know a good dress if it was gifted to you <laughs> by Rachel. By make, Rachel make make I wouldn't. You're right. That's true. Rachel's gifts are awesome. Oh, my gosh. So good. That's I mean that's just that's why, why that's why she's yeah. what she loses in white nationalism she makes up for in <laughs> gifts. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no. Oh. No. <laughs> <At> the, <laughs> imagine, imagine the mountain you have to make up <laughs> with what you with what you lose in white nationalism. Did you see the dress? <laughs> At the I mean, beginning of boy. the movie, uh, Jules is uh, coming <laughs> to her house. Uh, she's uh, There's something very serious going on. She gets a call. She drives home, and <laughs> she. you guys know the scene uh, in Home Alone where the pizza delivery driver keeps hitting the statue yeah. guy? Yeah. That happens in this movie. She drives into her driveway and hits her trash cans right. that I guess she was surprised at where they were, which then preceded the trash can... <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 impact caused her car to begin to smoke. Uh, I don't know uh, very uh, how why she didn't know. Like, were the trash cans not in the right place? Because I like uh, she came in and said so. Uh, one of the, the old, little T didn't move the trash can. She really? does that when she comes in. Little but T. I was very concerned for Volkswagen as a brand <laughs> because I've owned a Volkswagen, but the Volkswagen she is driving apparently is so fragile that if it hits a Tin trash can going about five miles an hour. That's it. Radiator is shot. I, Volkswagen, if they're watching, they had to be like, you can't put this in the movie. I, I couldn't believe that, that happened. Yeah. It could have easily um, just hit the trash can. Panda, you brought up the guitar playing thing. Mm -hmm. And I just want to bring up that the dance scene as a whole where there's... The dance scene is ridiculous. The dance scene, the, her and Ashton are in the ballroom dancing. They're playing electric guitar in the, the adjacent room. And then over here, the little girls have their own little dance party. And then it becomes one giant dance party that's just very long, very weird. I think they do use the word gangster music. Mm -hmm. ghetto. They, ghetto music. Yeah. yeah. So, so that not, lots of not good in R that Rachel scene. Rachel McKnight, I think, did help ride it. <laughs> yeah. I, but, but that whole scene is probably one of my least favorite scenes I've, I've yes, seen And that so scene far. is so cringy, terrible. And then they go to an exterior shot of the castle. I guess so you can hear the music faintly. Yeah, rocking out. And then they go back in for more dance scene. Yeah. <laughs> when they go back in, it's not over. It's more. It's like, long. If it, it had ended long. before the exterior shot, at the exterior shot, we'd have been like, all right, that was weird. It goes back in for seconds, baby. <laughs> like, it is bad. Real bad. And uh, my last one is, uh, it takes place as the very last part of this movie. They get, they just got married. They get out and they're on the little carriage and they're doing a little back and forth. Now, I don't know if she was just continuing the bit or if he broke news to her, but they're like, you, you're, you're my prince. And he's like, you're my princess. And, um, she's like, uh, says something else. And he's like, well, uh, we're, we're next in line for the throne. And she like gets straight faced and goes, wait, like for real. Yeah. And then he's like, yeah. Did she like? But did she find out on her wedding day that they're next in line for the throne? Or was that a bit? It was that yeah. a bit? But it's one of the what the hallmarks because I know he's a prince, but his dad is the duke, not the king. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, there was a lot of things I was. So I don't know the family tree of who actually is in line for the throne there. And maybe that's why she was confused. Maybe yeah. that's why it was news to her. Yeah. Maybe he like assumed that she knew that, didn't need to explain. And then they got married. <laughs> and and then they got married. And I, she thought she was just going to be uh, going to be a duke dukehead for the rest of her yeah. life. I no. wish, I head. wish you could have duchess. sequels. There Call it a duchess. Nah. Not, not a duchess. Not a duchess. A duchess. Nah. Yeah. This movie could have so many sequels. Mm, so many for years. Damn. Um, I, you took a couple of my big ones. Uh, to the early on in this movie, it's they try to make it clear that the kids are a mess. Like the girl is like overfilling the washing machine. The boy is like you know getting into stuff and you know, just buying you know comic books he shouldn't buy. And the housekeeper quits, and she's like, "These two kids are just untenable. We can't take care of them." And I just want to be clear: she is sitting doing a crossword puzzle. So while she should be watching the children. She is in a recliner with a blanket doing a crossword puzzle. She's the world's worst nanny. It's not the kids, which are pretty standard, normal kids. It's the fact that this nanny thinks her job is to do a crossword puzzle while they go crazy. Not the kid's fault at all. When the guy shows up from Castleberry, he says, the plane tickets will be here later, and then here's a check to cover travel expenses. And the check is for $12,000. And I am just confused as to what costs money aside from the plane tickets, which are coming later and not included in that $12,000. Because it, 
it feels like if your flights are covered and all you have to cover is a taxi to the airport and a taxi to the, to Castleberry and maybe some food, you just made twelve thousand dollars. Am I wrong there? I think that was part of the idea where she goes, "Oh wow!" Like I think that was kind of like like covering they're, travel. Expenses. They're paying her to come out. Yes. Instead, they're paying her just to show up yes. and come out to the proceedings. It, it was to entice her to come. I'm in for that. She does the worst, uh, Rachel McKnight and Katie McGrath do the worst slip and fall I think I've ever seen uh, in one of these movies. Like when you do a slip, you're supposed to let your momentum kind of kick you back. And she kicks her leg out and then she just kind of lays down. And it's clear that it's like a two-piece slip and fall. It's like whoop. And then she just kind of leans back like this. It doesn't work very well at all. The dance scene is bad. That's all I've got for now because I've got uh, one I want to say for what the hallmark. Guys, I just got word of two things. One, the grandfather apparently paid back uh, the money for the dress when he found out about it. Good so to know. Good for him. Good. And two, Chris McNally is going to be on Riverdale. So pretty excited about we get him these worlds, the we, yeah. worlds colliding for me. Joining old Martin. You know, you know uh, Gower's been on uh, Riverdale forever. Mm -hmm. so. Gower. Um, Gower. What did I say? Gower? Gower. Yeah. I called him Gavin. You called him <laughs> Gower. <laughs> we'll meet in the middle. We'll meet in the middle. Uh, it's time for what the Hallmark is part of show. We wonder what could have been. Maybe him. Uh, Panda? I got to know more about Bunny McCracken. Yeah, I, got a taste I of hate it. that they explained her because they explain her because I they think that do, was all but, of ours. But I want to know more. We didn't get a line from her, which was unfortunate. And I want to know, like, because there's still a lot that they say she's a uh, crude. They say she's crude, I believe. She doesn't like children. She's crude. She wrote like they, they give a laundry list and you're like, man, but then they just show her. We don't get to hear her because she looks like Cruella DeVille. Yeah, yeah. And she's named Bunny McCracken. I, there's just a lot there. Yeah. I, I just want to know more of it. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I guess my question is just about, you know, the 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 kids. I'm assuming they're also coming up. I mean, this is where a sequel would come in handy. But, like, you know, she's marrying into a royal family. Mm -hmm. She's also the guardian for these two kids. I'm correct? assuming that they're Whose family is yeah. in, you know, who they're, you know, her the whole life was in. Are they coming over? What's that? Are they going to be living in there? Is he, is little T going to be little Prince? Like what, <laughs> like what's kind of happening uh, with the kids as they move into royalty is a question that I have. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> you said royalty. I thought you were coming up with another name. It's like <laughs> little T's going to be royalty. <laughs> oh, I do like that. <laughs> See what we do there. Uh, like mine is actually another group that's being invited to this party. It's in the background, but Sir Roger Moore is talking through all the people, and he said, everyone we've gotten responses from. And then he says this, and I want to make sure I get this right. He says, except for the Cromwells, they are impossible to pin down. Yeah, I just need to know more about the Cromwells. I mean, are they just that squirrely? Like, are they just, you can't figure them out? Or they're just never, they're that type that never RSVPs to anything? Like, what's going on with the Cromwells? Impossible to pin down, according to Sir Roger Moore. That's all I have. Um, and I think the big question that all of us have been asking is, uh, what's Lil T's music like? And I do have a song uh, by him really quick. Travis Turner's his name. Yeah. His, uh, the song is called uh, Star Girl featuring Snoop Dogg. So that's Lil T. Wow. Yeah, the more you play to that, the more dangerous it got, I yeah. feel like. Yeah. I feel like, wow, we, he did it. Yeah. And Snoop's on that track. Snoop's on that track, apparently. Which, cool. to be fair. Snoop's on every track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he did a few for us. We will not play those under uh, any can't. circumstance. We can't. Well, he did a few for us in case we ever decide to go that route and get our show canceled. And so we, you know. <laughs> Um, he'll just do it for, you know, Snoop's up for whatever, it's man. That's fair. Love it. It's cool. Uh, with it, everybody, congratulations. We do have a double decker of the week. Somebody who has signed up for Brainwave Jam Plus uh, to support us to say, hey, here's some coin that we could then spend on Dogecoin and see if we can double mm -hmm. our investment. Double. Um, which, um, and <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, who do we have today? Um, this could go, it, it's either Cherie uh, Beeler. Or Sherry Beeler or Sheree Baylor and Sherry Baylor. Well, Let's go with... Panda would know. He I, did do the deep dive my, on her. Okay. Yeah, it's Sherry. I think it's Sheree Beeler. I think it's Sheree Beeler. It, I think it could be Sheree Beeler, too. <laughs> I Googled uh, I Google Plus it, and it, it said, your guess is as good as mine. Which wow. Wow. I wow. said that. Uh, Dude, that's then classic Google, Google. Then Google just went like that, and it was, it was weird. But uh, did they, they tell you anything about... 
her life? Oh, absolutely. Okay, good. Because they don't know the name, but they do know her. They life. know a lot about her. She actually, uh, she builds Volkswagens. She oh, that's great. Volkswagen. That's yeah. great. It, it, it dovetailed beautifully. Yeah. What do you, well, so what do you mean she built? Like she's on the line? Like what's uh, she doing? Uh, so she takes a wagon, a little standard red wagon, and then just connects a whole bunch of batteries to it. It's really great. <laughs> is Volkswagen the car? Uh, are they upset? Like is she? It seems like there's some copyright infringement here. Volkswagen, V O L T S. It's a different name entirely, Dan. Okay, it's two words the Volks Volkswagen. Wagon. Yeah. And then who rides in the What's the, the purpose of it? So What's you the go point? ahead and you just hop in yeah. and the batteries help it go. It's just a bunch of double A batteries just all going and they help just the double what do you A batteries. They help it. They have to be connected there's to little, something. There's a little engine in there that just goes. Is it like covered? Because this seems like this could give How a shot. How many double A's? Or, are we talking? Uh, well, she's still working on it. The conceptual design, it's about 2,000 of them. Because it, I know. <laughs> but you get about. It's, uh, it's I don't very know if state you know of the this. art. I don't know if you know this, but it they can go they, a solid. Hour. But they, they make, make bigger big, batteries. Like I, I C's, drive a scooter sometimes. And it's, batteries, not it's not double A. Ion batteries. They make all kinds of batteries. Ethereum. Sure, sure, sure. But rechargeable said, batteries. Okay, all those are great ideas, and it's I just think not can, what Cherie's going. That's for. not what she's looking at. She says, "What's going to be sustainable for the planet long term?" And she and does she the went, opposite. <laughs> well. Using Think about it. Double as A's are cheaper than all those batteries. But yes, but using two thousands. using two thousand of them for okay, one hour ride, but, but she didn't is have not bigger good. Wi- she did not have bigger wires to do. She Cherie, said, are you saying on the record, Cherie Beeler hates the planet? <laughs> say it or don't I, say it. I, I what can't. is she doing? Is she making any pledges like by twenty fifty five? Like, well, Google Plus we'll had be, her on a watch list, okay. and that's all I can okay, say. Okay, okay, okay. All right, fair enough. Wow. Boy, but I'm it, I'm all a fan. Is this still I'm a prototype, or can people buy this? The Volkswagen. I, I, I've bought five. How many are? The, well, how much does it cost? I mean, I. So you are ten thousand batteries deep 10, at this point. Ten thousand deep. I saw them live, <laughs> and they were unreal. I bought one for you. Bought one for you. Bought one for me. Bought one for my daughter and my wife. We love them. We just go around the neighborhood for a solid hour. And it's it's a and blast. then it's done. How long does it take to put the batteries in to switch them out? Because well, that seems well, like it's connected. She that's her that's Cherie's job, from what I understand. It's all good to go. You hit start. It's good, but for it's an only hour. for an hour. And yeah. then what do you do? <laughs> yeah, then I have to replace them. It takes a little bit of time. <laughs> I mean, the markup on the car has to be crazy for you it's to a not wagon. just go and buy it's a wagon. another it's a car. wagon. But okay, don't call it a car. It's, that, wagon, it's important it's that we don't. Wagon. It's important okay. that we the don't call it a car. Right. But my question is, is that what's the markup to stop me from just buying another wagon instead of two thousand more batteries? Do they have the engine in them? You can buy a Red Rider wherever you want, Dan, but it's not going to come with the engine. So how much is the wagon? I don't know. Like I don't know, fifty <laughs> bucks. I don't know. Because. Two thousand. Are you asking A's. me how much is her wagon? Because this is a special Volkswagen. I mean, if we say a double A, if we say a double A is, is fifty cents each battery. Yeah. It can't be priceless. You bought them. It's a th- <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, I'm, out, I'm out ten grand. Yeah, but that's true. It's two thousand per wagon. Wow. So it's a dollar a battery. It's a dollar a battery with the with the wagon and everything, and the engine and everything. Yeah, uh, the engines are pretty. It's pretty good. You, it's actually not a bad deal on batteries. It isn't a bad deal on batteries, but I would still just probably just buy a new one instead of putting them all in myself. If that's the route I'm going, yes. Which I no, be well, it would be. It would be. Co- I've ever heard. I'm not going in this route. It would be cost. You're, you're it, it's hard to find. It, it is so, hard to find a dollar a battery. So it actually would make more sense to just buy a new a wagon. New and actually, I would encourage you if you were just in the uh, business uh, need of ba- batteries, this would probably be a good. Uh, cost uh cost cutting way to do it because it's hard to buy like 12 12 yeah. batteries is going to cost you like 15 bucks yeah. it's hard to get a dollar battery well, unless you buy the bargain which you don't want that you want the duracells or the energy yeah you want the big boy do they use does she use good she boys uses the big boys right uh, oh no uh, oh no it's not uh, right uh we will be back with more of deck the hallmark at a later date uh <laughs> until then Prepared. may we be the first to wish you a merry, merry christmas, christmas. Deck the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast is presented by Philo TV. It's produced by Brandon Gray and recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. Set decor is by Plum at Haywood Mall. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on Bramble Jam podcast network, you can go to bramblejampodcast.com.